it was concurrent with the uh, with the Brown decision when I got to Topeka, you know, Brown versus Board of Education. And I had had problems with, at Bob Jones with uh, racial discrimination. Somehow it didn't suit my understanding of the scriptures. Uh, it seemed to me that as an adjunct to what I was preaching, that nobody was effectuating any civil rights in this Jim Crow town. No lawyer was doing anything about it. I went to the law school and I effectuated the Civil Rights Act. Both uh, the Brown case opened it up and the uh, Civil Rights Act of 1964. It was no big thing when he started in those days. If the phone rang and you picked it up to have someone on the other end of that phone screaming at you, uh, all manner of nigger lover and things like that. And we had our cars shot up and the building was shot up and just anything like that was bound to happen. So we've, we seem to have always had a little controversy that surrounds us. My youngest brother, Tim, who lives across the street here, he was in grade school and my dad reopened that Brown versus Board of Education case that, you know, came out of Topeka. Four or five kids beat the crap out of him on the way home from school one day. Kids just come to school and just start hitting me. And it was so bizarre to me. I mean, I was a quiet kid. I wasn't like real social. And at that time, we were in a school that was predominantly white. It was the newest and fanciest school in town. The parents didn't appreciate suddenly having to have black kids come into their school. And it trickled down. And it was just an amazingly hostile environment. I'm telling you that when you read that God has of one blood created all nations of men, it is impossible thereafter to believe that any one of them is different essentially, fundamentally, or better or worse than any other one. And that's what the old preachers preached. And therefore, it, it, it's a part of my ministry uh, when that law school close, is close at hand and when I have a natural propensity for such things to just get a law degree. It was very easy. I was editor of the of the Law Journal and captain of the Moot Court team, those two extracurricular activities, either one of which is a man killer. I was both of them, and when I graduated, had ten children. I, that was a third of the whole, of the whole class. All the rest of the law students put together graduating when I did had twenty, <laughs> and I had ten. Since our father had in, had taught us and ingrained in us the notion that. There is no difference between any human versus another human. We all are of the same blood. Um, it was a bizarre concept to me that anybody would, would honestly and genuinely believe that, that different races meant different qualities. Where we went to school, where our kids go today, there was like two black families in that whole grade school, middle school, high school on the southwest part of Topeka. Today it's more like a third of the kids are black because of that reopening of that case. For the last uh, 46 years, we've declared war on this community uh, by lawsuit after lawsuit for uh, black civil rights. And in fact, we were the only ones doing it for a long, long time. My father had the, the, the perseverance, the diligence, the strength to know how to get into federal court and to, and to represent people's rights that had been violated way too long. And he got big victories, big ju money judgments. I had the first uh, all-white jury give a black assistant city attorney here a whole lot of money because they had fired him and replaced him with a young white lawyer right out of law school, a guy named Bill Glenn, Glenn versus Topeka. There's guys still w wetting their pants just over the prospect of having to litigate with him. I'm talking seasoned attorneys, physically afraid they would shake when you come to the courtroom. He was, he was, he was a wild man. He might be a little heavy-handed, you know. He might be a little hard to take. He might say what he thinks, and it may not be something you want to hear, but his heart was not wrong, and, and that's why they hated him. Back then, the challenge was, why do you want to disrupt the community? That was basically it. Why, when everything's so peaceful and wonderful, it's okay. Uh, people are just trying to learn to get along with black people. You know, you can't, I ain't got nothing against black people. I think everyone ought to own one, that kind of a attitude. In this community, 
they hated us uh, for the first 40, 50 years because we, we said, one law shall be to him that is homeborn and to the stranger that sojourns among you, and that he is made of, of one blood, all nations to dwell upon the earth, and hath appointed beforehand the bounds of their habitation. During the Civil Rights Movement at KU, there were lots of sit-ins, and those black students would be arrested, and there was a prosecutor over in Douglas County that would prosecute them. So one of the first things my dad did when he got out of law school was go over there and defend those students. And one of those students was Gail Sayers. They couldn't get a white lawyer to go to Lawrence and defend Gail Sayers and those 102 black people. So they came to me. And we commenced to suffer the same kind of vilification by the paper, same kinds of assaults and batteries beating my kids up because I was determined by God Almighty in heaven. This was a shame and a disgrace, and we were going to stop it. And then the people came along that didn't have any money, and nobody wanted to be bothered with them. They're just trash anyway. But their rights were at stake, and he didn't care they didn't have the money. He, he took the time to uh, represent the rights. Fred Phelps is good at raising Cain in the courtroom and just about everywhere else. My good. passed out my stuff. It's earned him the wrath of some, the respect of others. On this day, he's accepting an award for his civil rights crusade, a crusade that began years ago when he was growing up in Mississippi. I say, there's only one class of people got treated worse than Negroes. And that was what those cultured white people called Negro lovers. It's God Almighty, you understand never said it's an abomination to be black or old or disabled or female. All of those are protected classes in the Civil Rights Act of 1964. Now the fags want to be added to that. Uh, those that have been discriminated against especially by government unwarranted because of immutable conditions of being. Understand immutable conditions of being. You are black. It's not something you do. They deserve the protection of the law. That's Bible. But these evil creatures that the Bible calls beasts and other uncomplimentary un uh, uh, names and metaphors. They define themselves not by an immutable condition of being but by conduct voluntarily engaged in and not neutral conduct but despicable conduct, filthy conduct, immoral, depraved, sinful, criminal conduct. And they say, look, I voluntarily engage in this filth Therefore, pass laws to make me a protected class. So you can't even preach against me. You can't even preach against me.